yeah, Twisted Sister from the 80s there with D. Snyder. We're not gonna take it. And um, welcome, this is Brother John. Welcome to Third Proverb. Doing things a little bit different format today, kind of a radio format. So, um, forgive uh, any kind of noises on the microphone I'm using here. Um, it's not exactly professional microphone, <laughs> but anyway, oh uh, yeah, we're not going to take it anymore, and um, I'm using that song as a kind of a bumper music for a couple of, just a couple of topics I want to discuss, and um, as you can tell by the, uh, probably the title of this video is, um, for God's sake, when is the can going to run out of road? <laughs> we've been listening and we've been hearing. I've been hearing for years, you know, and about we keep kicking the can down the road when it comes to this uh, economic situation. We're in. The constant bailouts, the printing of money. Um... I think it was like last year, every news clip, every politician was using that line, kicking the can down the road. Uh, but, um, I'm running, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, when are we going to run out of road? And if, um, if you are like me, some of you, you're a little bit frustrated, especially, um, those who are, um, invested in uh, gold and silver and see it as the safe haven to be uh, when yes when when the collapse comes and that's another thing we've always been hearing saying right uh, hearing them say um, it's not if it's when well, I do believe it's gonna happen I mean when that is the problem um, how far does the manipulation go? How, how much money can be printed when it just blows up in your face? What's the magic number? I guess everybody just wishes they had that magic number. And, um, we're seeing, in, you know, even with the news of Greece and things going on, and silver is not moving too much. It hasn't moved too much over the past couple months. A little up and down, but nothing really significant that we're like a lot of us are waiting for. And uh, with that, I wanted to address those of you who maybe just recently started investing into silver. Uh, you kind of got in when it started going up, up, up. Around, uh, what is that, 2003, 2004, you start to see, uh, start to see the uh, slow in the incline. Uh, perhaps I'll put a chart up on this video. Don't know what I'm going to do here. Like, again, I'm just going into the microphone using my, just, and maybe I'll put some pictures up afterwards. And maybe put the chart up. For you and look at the, um, it'll be a 30 year chart. So, if you look at the 30 year chart from 1982 all the way to 2003, no real significant stuff, you know. Um, until we started having the crises, you know, the whole real estate, six, seven, eight, when busted, eight is when doom stuff, you know, started going up, but, and, you know, you've been, you were, the big buzz of silver started coming out, um, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is, I understand probably some of your frustrations of those of you who maybe gotten in maybe one, two, three years ago, four years ago. And you're looking for those significant moves. You feel like you missed the boat last year. Or what was like April, May. When we got to um, near $50 an ounce. 
Rank Rope Records. Oh, and part of me wanted to sell. See, I got in. I got in. I started probably late 90s. I started getting to gold and silver. Steadily. Um, heard all the buzz back then, you know. And I, it was the same thing as here, you know. It's going to come down, you know. We're at uh, eight, nine trillion dollar debt. And blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm buying this gold, silver, and I'm waiting for that, you know, where's the moves, where's the moves, you know. And then there was a time, I guess, I think I just, like, you know, I put it on the shelf and didn't think about uh, 9-11 happened. I think after 9-11-01, started seeing a little bit of movement upward. Just a little bit. I thought at that point, uh, for sure... It was going to go much higher than it did, but it didn't. Uh, gold at the time, oh, you are going to really probably shoot yourself in the head. <laughs> but gold at that time, at 9-11, 2001, was uh, about 200 yes, $275. It was around there. Silver, mm, I can't remember. Again, if I put the chart up, um, silver might have been around seven dollars, somewhere around there, six dollars. So, so I thought, yeah, boom, this is gonna be the good time. Yeah, but it didn't happen. But now, after crash of 08, um, start seeing a significant rise, and here we are, gold, sixteen hundred, what, fifty dollars, silver. Trying to hit back up to that $29 mark. And um, so, over a 10 year time. So, I'm finally seeing some of that. Um, but, I can't say I wasn't tempted to try to sell some stuff and cash in on those great gains. Um, but I'm I'm one of the bleep of trying to hold on to uh, it as long as possible. Always going to have it. You know, that's our hedge against inflation. <clears throat> so, just like, remember when Mr. Ron Paul uh, held up that silver dollar to Ben Bernanke, you know? <laughs> and told him, you know, this silver dollar, this silver, ounce of silver, I could buy the same amount of gasoline today as if I had the silver... Oh, it's 10 years ago. <laughs> so, you know. That's the truth. Right? So, um, but those of you who feel a little frustrated, hang in there. Hang in there. You have to think long term. You gotta think that if things go bust, if there is hyperinflation, things are gonna cost a lot more money. And um, unless you're going to go gamble in the stock market or go gamble in the casino, um, you're going to have your money in, what are you going to do, have your money in the bank? You're going to have your money tied in CDs making, well, what are you making, 1% interest a year? <laughs> um, And then if there's inflation, then that becomes, your money becomes worthless, right? You don't even keep up with inflation. Savings rates in a bank don't keep up with inflation at all. You're getting 1% in the bank, 2% if you're lucky. And inflation, you're going to tell me, is not greater than 2% over the past year. Have you gone food shopping? I would say on a whole, easily 10%. And that's not figuring in the uh, gas prices. See, the government doesn't like to include food and gas in their inflation numbers. Yeah, like, you know, it's like one of the biggest expenses, you know, probably right behind uh, your housing. <laughs> so, you know, you're looking 10, 15, maybe even 20% inflation. 
And you're going to have it in the bank for 1%. Nah. Buy the silver. Hold on. Um, because if there is hyperinflation, you know the problem. That's when, you know, think silver's going to skyrocket. Gold's going to skyrocket. And you'll have those coins to buy the same things. You'll be able to cash it in, say, if there is a currency, whatever the means may be. It's going to have that value. It holds its value. So, you'll be, in the long run, doing better than if you had it in the bank. Which you might not even be able to get your money, get to your money in the bank if there's a bank holiday, so. <laughs> so, yeah. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on to that gold, silver. Keep stacking, definitely. Um... So, part of me is like, you know, I can't take it. I can't take it. We're not going to take it. Get frustrated here. I want to see the movements. And um, it's not happening, but don't worry. Hold on. Here's the other thing. Um, the frustration, yeah. I keep hearing the, um, the news, you know, the... I guess what it is, I'm getting a little tired. I, you know, I think we can be, especially us who are prepping for such a time. It we can get addicted. Where well, I'm finding that um, I'll I'm subscribed to certain channels, and um, they all express how bleak it's going to be, with good reason, and I'm in agreement with them. Um, but I think sometimes, for me, what's happening, you can get addicted to the doom and gloom news. The doom and gloom channels, you know. Though they're, you know, they're speaking a certain amount of truth. But it's like, how much more do we listen to it when it's just pretty much, alright, this is happening and it's something's gonna happen big, blah, blah, blah. It's coming, you know. How many times do we have to keep, you know, I'm saying to myself, how many times do I have to keep listening to that? Because, I mean, all right, I know in my head, it's coming. I don't know when. Um, what do I do? I prepare for the worst, right? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And that's all I can do. So, you know, what's the point of listening when I, you know, just, it's just a matter of when it happens. And being prepared when it does happen. The other thing I want to talk about, as far as we're not going to take it, I got to give props to the protesters in New York. Apparently, there was about 50,000 protesters through the streets of New York City protesting against the stop and frisk policy of the New York City Police Department. Apparently, uh, thousands, I don't know, I, the number was just, uh, I don't know if it was 60,000? It wasn't really actually 600,000 stop and frisks last uh, year. 53% of them, so, so the polls say, uh, were black, 34% Latino, and uh, perhaps maybe, of course, some of the reports uh, on TV. Where the NYPD, mostly in yep, black and Spanish neighborhoods, where they suspect most of the uh, drug problems are, uh, they go through their neighborhoods and anyone looking suspicious, they're stopping them, asking them for ID, frisking them. No probable cause. No reason at all. And I think 83% um, it was of all those frisks, people were totally innocent. Then you had another percentage that um, 
they were carrying small amounts of marijuana. Then they're arrested, processed, right? And now these people have a record, making it more difficult to get a job. And um, now you have this, you know, whatever, misdemeanor stuff with small amounts of marijuana, which is totally ridiculous. It's another topic, but I am totally for decriminalizing uh, marijuana. So, but that might change in, in New York pretty soon. But anyway, the point being, these stop and frisks were going on, and now the people have risen up. And now I'm watching the streets and, you know, petitioning Bloomberg to change his policy. And rightfully so. It's very unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. Just for them just to stop anybody, just for looking, looking suspicious. Looking whatever stereotype you have in your head, right? So, unbelievable. Becoming like a Gestapo nation over there in, in uh, New York City. So the uprise happened. They did a silent march, actually. They were silent for a good number of hours. I think there was only a small altercation towards the end. But, um, uh, how much more has to happen? Before more of America and in more states start rising and saying we're not going to take it anymore. We are tired of uh, being robbed by bankers, lied to by politicians. When do we take the streets? When does it happen? When does we get one, two, three million people in front of the White House? Or thousands in front of your representatives in the states. I think maybe perhaps there will have to be hyperinflation before there's more of an uprising because people usually don't get angry till it hurts our pocket. All right, come on, let's a minute. We all have a little greed in us. We all want that American dream. We want to have that money in our pocket, right? That sense of security, that sense of financial freedom. We are working hard, more and more hours to obtain this dream. And it's draining the individual, it's draining families, killing time that could be spent more with our family and friends. Instead, you have to survive in a family, two people need to work, that's going to affect family time, just to, so you can make ends meet. And it's, um, and that's another part of the problem, it's, we've now become so busy and distracted. And we just think this is the way it should be. But once it starts really hitting home, where when people start losing their homes, can't pay them rent, getting evicted, whatnot, I guess when that happens on a more bigger scale, you will see um, more people rising, uprising, protesting. So, that's all I have to say. Thanks for sticking around this long if you've been listening. This is Brother John. Hang in there, my friends. Peace and prosperity to you all. And we'll talk to you soon.